Before we can get started building the site, the first thing we need to do is install Craft. Unfortunately, the installation is straightforward and guided via a wizard, but there are some prerequisites that you want to make sure you have satisfied before moving forward. Let's review the minimum requirements required to install Craft. These requirements are as of the recording of this course, so please check with the Craft documentation for the latest requirements. So here's what you'll need to have. PHP 5.3.0 or later with safe mode disabled. MySQL 5.1.0 or later with InnoDB. A web server. Now I use Apache, but of course you can use anything that you prefer, like IIS. Just kidding, who likes IIS? You also need plenty of memory allocated to PHP, at least 32 megabytes, but you might need more. And you also want to ensure that you have some required PHP extensions enabled. There's a full list of the extensions in the craft documentation, but they are, and I'll list them very quickly, Reflection extension, the PCRE extension, the SPL extension, the PDO MySQL extension, the Mcrypt extension, the GD extension with free type support, the OpenSSL extension, the Multibyte extension, the JSON extension, the curl extension, and Crypt with Blowfish Crypt enabled. Any sensible default server setup, like a typical LAMP stack server, will already have these extensions installed. If you find yourself with a server that doesn't have these and you can't enable them yourself, you'll need to contact your host or system administrator to have the extensions enabled. You shouldn't proceed until doing so. Also, as a regular reminder, it's worth spending a bit extra on reliable web hosting especially on web hosting that supports modern application requirements. If you find yourself running up against a web host's restrictions and you can't install Craft, I would encourage you to explore a better host. Email me if you would like some recommendations of where I like to host, support at majingo.com. And finally, make sure that you have your MySQL credentials and that the user has full privileges so you can write and read from the database. For a full list of the requirements for installing Craft that you can send to your web host or system administrator, visit craftcms.com slash docs slash requirements. The next step is to download Craft. The Craft application is freely available at craftcms.com and the download, once you grab it, will be a zip file. Let's talk a little bit about the licensing for Craft. Here's how it works. There's a personal license that you can get, and this is the free version of Craft that you can use for your own website that you build. It does have some limitations like no localization, you can only have one admin user for the control panel, but you do get unlimited sections, fields, tags, and other features. The next license is client, and this is for any sites that you build for your clients. This license forbids you to use the free version for clients. So if you want to have a client site that you're building for somebody, you need to use this client license. With the client license, you get two control panel accounts, one for the admin and one for the client, as well as some custom branding of the site logo and login screen. This version costs $199, it's 199 US dollars per site, and you purchase it via the control panel after installing the download from the Craft website. And I'll show that in just a minute. The third license is Professional. This version of Craft gives you access to all of the features of Craft, including unlimited user accounts, public user signups, system branding, assets support, including remote assets on Amazon S3, Rackspace Cloud Files, and Google Cloud Storage, and localization and translations. This is the best version of Craft, in my opinion, and if you really are serious about using Craft to build a site, it's worth the extra $100 to go from client to pro to get all of these extra features. You can view all of the license types and what's included on the official CMS pricing page that you see here at craftcms.com pricing. For this project, we are going to use the pro version of the Craft CMS application. And I'm going to show you in a few minutes how we can run the pro version for free when we use Craft locally 
on our computers. With the Craft application downloaded, we can now begin the installation process. And the first step of that process is to upload our files to our server. But before we do that, I want to take a look at what was in the download that we just got from craftcms.com. There are two directories once you unzip the file. There's the craft directory and the public directory. The craft directory contains the application itself, while the public directory is where the publicly accessible files are stored. Once we upload these directories, we want to point our web server to this public directory. This keeps the craft application directory out of the publicly accessible directory. Okay, let's upload the files to our server. So I'm going to grab both of these directories and then go over here. And this is where my server location is. Now I'm running everything locally right now because I always develop locally first and I'm using MAMP Pro. I like to use MAMP Pro because it's a simple way to locally host multiple sites. You can use whatever you want that makes the most sense for hosting locally, but I encourage you to host locally and not try to build on a remote server. It's much too slow and tedious. Everything I do in this course will be locally hosted because that's how I always build my sites. And once the site is done, we could then move it to a remote server by deploying it via any one of many means, including just uploading the files and directories we created and then importing a copy of the local database. So let's go ahead and copy everything over to our server directory. Because in MAMP, a server directory is just a directory in your system. So we'll grab these two and copy them and drop them in craftybrewery.dev is the directory name. And with those there, I can actually remove some of this stuff that MAMP Pro put in there. So I'm just gonna delete that. I wanna leave my workspace and project files here from Sublime Text. Those are just uh, some helper files for my Sublime Text project for this site. Okay, so we want our web server to point at public. And that's what I've done. I've pointed MAMP at public. And once I do that, Apache and MySQL will restart. And once they're restarted, our site is now pointing at public. And inside of public, we have our index file, which handles all the incoming requests to the site. Uh, we have a robots.txt file and an HT access file. I'm running on Apache, so I don't need web config. So I'm going to get rid of that. So remember, even though I'm in the finder here on OS 10, I'm still technically working on a server because this is where MAMP is uh, looking for the files that it is hosting. Another thing we need to do is rename this HT access file to .htaccess so Apache will read it and process it with each request. Now I can't do this in the finder, I have to do this in the terminal. So I'll go into my public directory and you can see that HT access and I'll just say move htaccess. HT access. And now you can see it's not showing if I just do a, a simple listing of files and directories. If I show hidden, now you can see my dot HT access. So we got that all set up. So now Apache will read that HT access file, which we wanted to do. So our URLs will be proper when we pull up the craft site in the web browser. Next, we want to ensure that permissions on files and directories are correct. This is important because Craft needs to write to some directories, like the storage directory. And at the very least, we need to set the following directories to the 744 permissions. Craft slash app, craft slash config, and craft slash storage. So let's do that. So I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to change my permissions. And we'll change it on config and then on storage. There we go. Next, we need to create the database and note our database connection information. I've already created my database and I'm calling it crafty brewery dash build. This application right here is called SQL Pro. It's a great Mac OS 10 application for managing uh, local and remote databases. We need to make sure we have our database connection information 
because now it's time to set up our config file so Craft knows how to access the database. If Craft can't access the database, we can't install it because Craft needs to run some scripts to install some tables and rows and data in the data database. So to do that, let's open up our project in Sublime Text. We want to go to the Craft directory and then to config and there should be a db.php file. We want to open that. This is our database configuration file and this is where we set our server name, database name, and authentication information for our user. We need to populate all four of these fields. But make sure you have the correct information before you start filling these out because the inst installation will not run without it. Now I have mine handy, so I know that my database is called Crafty Brewery Build. I know that my server is localhost, my user is root, and in MAMP, the default database user password is also root. And we can leave our table prefix as craft. If you wanted to change that to something else, if you were trying to run uh, craft in a, an existing database where there might be a name collision for tables, you might want to change that to something else, but we'll leave it as craft and save it. So now we're ready to run the installer. To run the installer, we go to the URL for our website. In my case, it's crafty-brewery.dev. Again, this is a locally hosted site. Now, uh, when I originally installed this, I got this MAMP Pro landing page. I've since deleted those files, but I do want to go to slash admin. And if everything is set up right, you should get pushed over to the installation page. Click begin. Walk through the wizard and fill out the information that Craft prompts you to input. In this case, we need to put in our username. I'll start with admin and I'll put in my email and a password. And now we want to set up our site. Craft is pretty clever. It figured out the name of my site from the URL. It pre-populated my URL and it defaulted to English as the locale. If you're doing non-English sites, you want to choose from one of the options in the dropdown. For us, we'll choose English. And now Craft kicks off the installation script. You can sit back for just a moment while it runs its scripts. With the installation done, we're ready to go to the Craft CMS control panel dashboard. And there we go. We now have Craft installed. This is what the dashboard looks like by default. And if we go to our site, we can see the default homepage as well with some default content. So that's how you install the Craft CMS. If you run into any problems, make sure you revisit that you have all of the prerequisites, you meet all of those requirements, that you have the proper connection information for your database, and that you set your proper permissions. With the installation complete, we are now ready to move on to the next step of building our site.